Last weekend, a monumental event enthralled the Splatoon community. Low Tide City 2024, a pivotal moment in the Splatoon competitive scene. In a testament to our community's competitive spirit and skill, this event drew 79 teams and nearly 350 players, marking it the largest in-person event for Splatoon 3 yet. As we explore the exciting details, I, Mad Gamer II, am thrilled to welcome you to this week's episode of The Weekly Inc. Before we head over to Texas, let's explore a few other tournaments that happened this week. Europe had a lot of action, with Paddle Pool 266 making a solid impression. Chingo and the Girlies and Monaco had an almost perfect run, losing only one game each in the tournament before the Grand Finals. However, Chingo and the Girlies persevered and took home the gold with a sweep in the Grand Finals, notably using a Paintbrush Nouveau that proved an unexpected powerhouse. Witnessing unique weapon choices that add spice to the competition is always a delight. But that was just a taste of what Europe had in store. A land event called United Land is set to take place in Germany next month, featuring a major Splatoon tournament organized by Toyoben. Last Friday, United Land hosted an online qualifier, where the winning team would receive a 50% discount on their event tickets as the grand prize. After a tough loss to Tomen in the winner's finals, Rogue made a remarkable comeback from the loser's bracket clinching a nail-biting 3-2 victory over Monaco and then defeating Tolman in a bracket reset in the Grand Finals with a solid 6-1 score, Rogue secured the win and the discount for United Land. Traveling back to the States, SwimmerSync 147 had a lot of teams practicing for the big event that was coming up. 43 teams came to show what they could bring to the table. Still, Star came out on top after winning 3-2 in a close set against Face and took home the gold in a nice 3-1 Grand Finals over Justice for Spargo, shutting down their perfect run. But now, let's turn our attention to the big event of the week, Low Tide City. For those living under a rock, Low Tide City is a major land that has been running for Splatoon since 2022 in Round Rock, Texas. It was the first major land to happen for Splatoon post-COVID. This year, it didn't disappoint. Bringing out 79 teams, it was the largest land ever seen for Splatoon. Many top teams and players came to show that they wanted the gold, with Starburst being the top seed and the one projected to win, especially with world champion Jared subbing in. However, victory would take a lot of work for Starburst, as Moonlight, playing for the first time in a land with their entire roster, was hungry for the win. After being knocked down to the loser bracket in a close 2-3 set with Ah Flex Mint, Moonlight made an insane loser run. Moonlight ran through Mickey Mart and Prickly Pear Lemonade before getting the revenge in the loser's finals against Ah Flex Mint, securing their spot in Grands. Moonlight came to the set with a goal in mind. Although Starburst were the ones still to come out on top, for the first time in LTC history, the Grand Finals went to a bracket reset. Moonlight pulled a clean reverse sweep against Starburst with a 3-1 score, making the crowd in the venue go insane with excitement. Taking a whole set of Starburst is nothing to scoff at. Moonlight should be proud of themselves for throwing Starburst off their game and creating a beautiful Grand Finals for the final LTC. Likewise, a huge congratulations to Starburst for winning LTC for the second time in a row. While it is sad to see Low Tide City go, let us look back at the memories we have made these past three years. Thank you to all the TOs for their hard work, ensuring everyone has a lovely time they will never forget. Thank you to all the teams for coming to the event and creating some of the most exciting Splatoon gameplay, as well as all the commentators for hyping up the game and the crowd. The turnout for this LTC was the best yet for Splatoon 3, with one of the most exciting crowds you could have for an event, thanks in part to Stu the announcer. The hype and the noise for the Grand Finals overshadowed the Smash Bros Ultimate Grand Finals crowd, showing how much staying power we as a community have. Before we wrap up, let's take a look at the future for Splatoon. Many exciting lands such as Momocon, Gridlock, and Riptide are happening relatively soon, with players and TOs that will carry the same energy and passion as Low Tide City has had. Splatoon has a bright future for lands, both with locals and majors. Thanks for all the memories, Low Tide City. We will never forget you. But with that, we hope you enjoyed this week's recap. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you all for hanging out, and thank you all for watching. This has been Iomad Gamer the Second. We'll see you all again next week on The Weekly Inc.